Today we're talking about our wrist hinge. A lot of controversy here, and uh, if you don't do it right, it will cause uh, major, major issues. Let's get you fixed up. So there's a lot of videos that show you how to hinge the wrists. The problem is that leads everybody off the wrong track. In this here, I'm gonna show you how to not hinge the wrists, which will produce the correct wrist hinge. Because with the wrong wrist hinge, you will hit uh, giant slices. That ever happened to you? You will also produce a wild, wicked pull hook and you won't be able to figure it out and you'll get no consistency. So here's the problem here is that most of us, when we try to hinge our wrists, we roll the club open and then we set our wrists. And that, my friends, produces this, a cupped wrist with a wide open club face. Now, I know what you're all saying. Well, Freddie Couples does this and that's the position he has. Well, yes, that is true, but Freddie doesn't roll his wrists open and then set his wrist like this, okay? He does it very different, and if your name was Freddie Couples, then you could do it too, but it's not. We're us, so we have to do things correctly to produce a more consistent result because we don't want to roll, set. I mean, that will be... no good. So that's why I say don't hinge the wrists because that is exactly what happens pretty much every time we try to get the correct wrist hinge. Now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to not hinge the wrists correctly because that will produce the correct wrist hinge, believe it or not. And then I'm going to show you how to hold the wrist hinge so that it comes into the ball properly. And as you might have guessed it, I'm gonna show you how to properly not hold the wrist hinge, which will actually produce the correct holding wrist hinge result. See, it's all about not doing something and it does the right thing. Isn't that fantastic? Here we go. So here is how you're going to not hinge your wrists. And it all happens at the very beginning of the backswing. You do this right, your job is done. Here's what you're gonna do. Instead of trying to roll, which gets that club way inside, and then you lift, which produces cupping, don't do that. Here's what we're gonna do. All I'm gonna do with my hands is push them this way on the backswing out. I'm not gonna lift or do anything. I'm just gonna push it out while I turn my shoulders. So you gotta push the hands and turn the shoulders at the exact same time. It's gonna take a little bit of practice, but once you get it, you can't push enough. Like you'll never push it that way too much. If you start lifting, that's no good. But you can't ever push it this far too much. So it's gonna look like this in slow motion. You're pushing this way as you turn. And I've done nothing else. I didn't roll, I didn't do anything, nothing. All I'm doing is pushing that club out this way and turning to here. That's all we're doing. Push and turn. Then, when you're here, see, I didn't, I didn't hinge anything. Your wrists will automatically do this. That, right there, that's your wrist hinge, right there. That's perfect, that's it. That is so subtle and easy. You won't even have to think about it because your push and your turn and your transition will make it do it all by its lovely self. Now, what everybody tries to do and they fail, we all fail, when we try to do is we try to come down holding our wrists. Problem number one is 
we've hinged incorrectly because we whipped it inside, rolled the hands and cupped the wrist, and then we're holding on, and then we shank it, wipe it, everything bad it, and that's no good. Now you've done the correct wrist hinge by not even trying to wrist hinge at all. So here is now how you can hold that wrist hinge to make great ball contact, get the compression you're looking for, and stop hitting it fat and sideways. So you've pushed and turned, and you're in a perfect position, and you transition, you get that wrist in. Here is how you hold it. You're going to just slowly rotate that hip. The faster you turn the hip, the worse this is going to be. All right? We want to turn this hip slowly. If you jerk it quick, it will stop, bottom out, and you won't be able to hold anything and you'll flip. If you turn this hip slowly, you're going to be able to keep it turning throughout the swing, which just by mathematics, geometry, physics, chemistry, whatever you like, that's what will hold that wrist hinge so that you can release correctly. The slow hip turn, we get too quick. We got to do it slowly. That, you're not even thinking about holding your hinge. It holds itself. So if we whip our hips too quickly, it stalls us out just like that. And we hit a nice fat shot there and it goes nowhere. And our hands release. So we want to turn those hips slowly, as slow as possible. Over exaggerate the slowness of it and you'll be surprised how far you hit that ball. So do everything perfect, slowly turn those and just keep them slowly turning throughout the swing. In golf, we do things too much. We try too hard instead of just letting it all come together. So don't hinge the wrists and don't try to hold the wrists. Just slowly let it happen and release and everything will go in the right position if you have the right takeaway and the right rhythm. That is what will get you all fixed up. Thanks for watching, love you guys. See you in the next video.